Welcome to our six-minute tutorial on BitTorrent. In this tutorial, we describe BitTorrent, its current uses, and the cable company's response to this high bandwidth application. Historically, Internet access has involved moving small amounts of information from the subscriber to the web, followed by large, moving large amounts of information from the web down to the subscriber. Take, for example, doing a search. The user sends a small string of data requesting information from Google, and Google responds by dumping a huge load of data onto the user's desktop. Small upstream, big downstream. Legacy cable networks work well with this model. Even the addition of low bandwidth symmetric services like voice do not pose a significant challenge to the MSO's existing branch and tree hybrid fiber coax architectures. More recently, however, new applications have begun to arise on the web that make significantly more demands on upstream bandwidth in the network. Three examples of such applications are BitTorrent, real-time multiplayer gaming, and Sling Media. Of these, we believe the BitTorrent application has the greatest potential to make disruptive demands on upstream bandwidth in today's network. As such, these applications can become a problem for the MSO as their legacy networks have limited upstream bandwidth today. BitTorrent is a free peer-to-peer -peer file, file sharing application being used by users today to download large video files from one another. There are three parts to a BitTorrent application. Users consisting of seeds and leeches, source files for downloading, and download files from the internet. Trackers are websites that coordinate such file transfers and introduce users to one another. Lastly, freely available BitTorrent client software is used to do the actual file transfers. Today, most BitTorrent applications feature the illegal downloading of movies, much of it pornography. We want to stress that BitTorrent is already a worldwide phenomenon and by some accounts drives more than 30% of all internet traffic today. This is surprising to many folks who have never heard of BitTorrent, but the reason for this is that most BitTorrent users are today's youth. Legal uses, however, for BitTorrent are starting to grow. In this picture, we see files being transferred using BitTorrent among several users. The tracker in the middle does not have a central repository of any such files. Its only purpose is to introduce users to one another. Therefore, it is difficult for a content provider to sue a tracker even though the activity going on may be illegal because the files being downloaded do not reside on the tracker's site. All files always reside inside the disk drives of the individual users. For these reasons, it is far more difficult for content providers to shut down BitTorrent trackers versus, say, a Napster application. BitTorrent users consists of seeds and leeches. Seeds are those users who have an entire copy of the file available for others to download. And leeches are those users that are either downloading the file or providing pieces of it to other leeches. BitTorrent client software is free and readily available on the internet. In addition to the original BitTorrent, other popular BitTorrent clients have become available and are shown here. The initial BitTorrent application had a little bit of a dilemma. Individual users have a strong incentive to download information on BitTorrent, but have relatively little incentive to leave their computers plugged in for other users to use for uploading. This has been solved mostly with the use of private trackers. Unlike public trackers, private tracker websites require users to register, although this rarely involves the register having to reveal his or her true identity. The use of such registration allows individual users to build download credits by uploading information onto the website for other users to use. For each file they upload, users are given credit which can be used to download additional movies. Because BitTorrent users are interested in downloading large amounts of information from BitTorrent, they have an incentive to upload as much as possible and as such leave the BitTorrent application running in the background on their computers for hours, days, and weeks at a time. The result of all this has created a truly global phenomenon has increased significantly the amount of bandwidth traveling on the internet today. The early cable response for BitTorrent consists of three parts. First, some cable companies have chosen to block the BitTorrent protocol entirely. The justification they use for doing this is that most BitTorrent users are using it for illegal activities today. However, if legal uses of BitTorrent continue to grow, 
this will not be a long-term solution for the cable companies. Second, some cable companies use a filter typically located in the cable modem termination system in the cable head end to limit the amount of traffic available for any individual user upstream. This is typically done in a traffic shaper that either resides inside the CMTS or sometimes available in a separate shelf. Lastly, the DOCSIS 3.0 standard allows for increases in available upstream bandwidth, which allows cable companies to help better deal with the growth of BitTorrent. Because Verizon's Fios network is typically able to serve more upstream bandwidth, it tends to be more BitTorrent friendly and thus poses a competitive threat to the cable companies. For more information on BitTorrent, we encourage you to view our BitTorrent demo. That concludes our BitTorrent tutorial.